Thank you for tuning into Growth Island again. Today, I'm going to have one of my most amazing episodes. That's a big claim, but you got to hang on for this one. We're going to talk about the death of death. And you might be thinking, what in the world does that mean? What if I told you that you might be able to not only live to 120, 150, or two to 300 years, or that you might actually be able to live forever if you didn't get hit by a car or something like that? So this might sound a bit out there for some of you, but I got an extremely cool guy in today. I'm going to only tell you like a tenth of uh, all of his credentials because he has so much experience. But uh, this guy has a bachelor and a master from MIT. So, you know, one of the best universities in the world. He also has a PhD. He has an MBA as well from INSEAD. The ones that also know that's one of the top universities. He was one of the pioneers with Singularity University of like, how do we live longer? And not only like live long, but live healthy. He is also the author of the book, The Death of Death, which has been published in many different languages. And he's the author of many other books as well. He's heading a bunch of research initiatives and groups and so on. And I could continue the entire podcast just telling about this guy's experience. But uh, instead, I wanted to get started on this amazing film. But it's uh, Jose Cordio. If I'm pronouncing it right, thank you so much for joining the podcast. Uh, Mats, it's my pleasure to join right now from Madrid, Spain. And uh, indeed, I am working towards immortality, or at least a mortality, which is basically not death, uh, planned, planned death, because death will always be with us, sadly. There will be accidents, maybe suicides and homicides, but at least we will stop aging and we will be able to live indefinitely young for as long as we want. And that is my goal. In fact, I do not plan only that because uh, by 2045, according to my friend Ray Kurzweil, we might be able to live indefinitely and rejuvenate ourselves, which is the important part. Uh, so rejuvenation technologies are possible. So, uh, and they will be mostly available to everybody who wants them in two to three decades. And so I like to say two things. Number one, I don't plan to die because I plan to make it uh, for the next uh, 30 years. And second, I plan to be younger in the future than today. In 2045, in 2050, I will be younger than today because the goal is biological rejuvenation. And that's an amazing claim. So I know some people will be saying like, but why should we live forever? Like, isn't that like there's a reason why we die off? What, what do you think about that? I personally, I love life. I think like, imagine if I had 400 years, that would be fantastic. All the things that I could learn, the impact that wouldn't be as uh, busy to do different things, but, but not everyone sees it that way. And I, and I guess you must have run into that quite often as well. Uh, yes, and I think it is a very sad question. If people already have a boring life, I mean, that is sad, but I... I I want to do so many things. I want to read so many books, to watch so many movies, to travel to so many places, to eat so many new foods. You know, I wish I had a, a hundred, a thousand million lives more. So, and, and this is the goal. And more people, I think, will realize that this is positive because we will be healthy. We will be young. And people are actually terrified of aging. And that is why we have to stop aging, reverse aging. And if you are young and healthy, you will most likely want to continue living. And, and you can see that with children and young people. Young people are full of life. It is when we begin aging and we get older and older and older that we actually think maybe we have lived too long, but yeah. that's because we are in bad health. The problem is bad health. So uh, immortality or indefinite life spans, they are good if you are young. So that is the objective, eternal youth. I like it. I definitely want to be on this journey with you, Jose. And uh, now I got a hold of you. So I'm going to be following you the next many years to make sure I'm at the forefront. So what are some of the things that we are seeing right now that makes us uh, make these kind of claims that we'll be able to uh, to potentially live forever? Like, what have you seen technology-wise? 
Well, uh, incredible things have been happening in the last few decades. For example, we have been able to double the lifespan of mice. We have mice that live um, the equivalent of about 200 human years today. With mosquitoes, even more. With the famous Drosophila melanogaster, uh, we have been able to multiply by four the lifespan. And with some worms, C. elegans, which is a very common model organism in biology, we have multiplied by uh, 10. So basically, we have worms that live um, 10 times more than a human uh, in worm years, okay? They actually live weeks normally, so now they, they live 10 times as many weeks. But anyway, they are called the Methuselah worms because they live the equivalent of a thousand human years. So anyway, this was thought to be impossible only a few decades ago, but more things are happening. One of the most incredible discoveries in biology uh, that actually got the Nobel Prize in medicine in 2012, uh, we call uh, cells reprogramming. We can reprogram the cells to be younger. A Japanese scientist called Shinya Yamanaka discovered that four genes, only four genes, can um, uh, rejuvenate cells in the skin of mice. Other scientists have been doing this with other types of cells, with other types of organs, other types of organisms. And actually, uh, it seems that between three four or six genes control the aging process. And this was thought to be absolutely impossible or incredible, but it is possible. And it is so much possible that the Nobel Prize in Medicine was given to Shinya Yamanaka for self reprogramming, for biological rejuvenation. That's fascinating. And we all uh, yes, the... And uh, yes, and there are many, many other things. Uh, let me tell my favorite story, which is cancer. Cancer cells are biologically immortal. And this was discovered a long time ago, but people didn't really begin thinking about this until recently. Uh, there was a patient called Henrietta Langs who was born in 1920, and she died in 1951 at age of 31 years uh, of cancer. She had a horrible pelvic cancer. And the doctors in John Hopkins University in Baltimore, they extracted the tumor, which was a big, it was like an orange, a huge uh, cancer tumor. And then they discovered that the tumor didn't die. Uh, if it was kept uh, on a Petri dish with uh, food and water, as, as we would say, uh, the, the tumor would keep on growing. Well, let me tell you, that tumor is alive today. So those cells were actually born over 100 years old, uh, um, ago, okay, in 1920. But they are like teenager cancer cells. And since that time, we have discovered that all cancer cells are biologically immortal. From the point of view that they do not age, Cancer cells discover how not to age. They stopped the aging process. That is why cancer cells stay indefinitely young. They don't age and therefore they don't die of aging. They can die of, of other things like chemotherapy, radiotherapy, or other treatments, but they do not age, they do not die. And to me, this is the most incredible example because cancer discovered how to stop aging and cancer didn't go to MIT. No. I did go to MIT and I can tell you that my fellow engineers from MIT, Stanford and many other places are learning what cancer discovered. And cancer who had no education could do it, we will do it too. We just need to figure out how. So we're already seeing, and also because some of the concerns I know from some people is like, this is only going to be available. And that is, it's only going to be available for the rich, but we are seeing like with DNA testing, how that was costing a billion dollars and how that's now available for everything or for everyone. So or most people, not for everyone to say yet, there's still people with too low of an income. So we're seeing these technologies. What are some of the technologies I know about DNA? I know about stem cells. I've heard about fasting that it's not that much of a technology, but like, what are some of the things that, that we can see works now? And what are the things that we believe 
will be the trigger points or the things that are going to make the difference going forward? Well, first, uh, you talked about uh, cost, and that I think is very important. And uh, we should expand on that because indeed many people think that this will be expensive, but it will not be expensive. Actually, I think this will be free. This will be free. And uh, actually, we can see it now with the COVID-19 pandemic, the vaccines are free to to people all over the planet and um, the full vaccination of the planet will be in less than two years so everybody will get this treatment for free if they want it okay because obviously some people might not want it the same with anti-aging and rejuvenation treatments some people might not want them some people might want to die and that is okay we cannot do anything if people don't want vaccines if people want to die that is their own decision you are free to die. In fact, this was the case until now. You had no choice, basically. You had to die. But now, for the first time, we will have the, the possibility of not aging. And why will this be free eventually? Well, first of all, because we need to understand chemistry and biology. We human beings are basically water bags. We are water bags. We are 70% water. And uh, everybody, well, there are some people who are more watery, who are a little bit fatter and have more water, but we are around 70% water. And we are not a uh, French uh, Perrier water or Swiss Evian water. We are basically tap water. So that is 70% of us. And the other 30% is the most common, basic, abundant, and cheap elements. We are basically carbon, uh, potassium, uh, nitrogen, and a few other elements. That is what we are. We do not cost $100 in chemical elements. No human costs more than $100 in chemical elements. And to keep a machine that is so cheap, because we are really cheap, a car is much more expensive in terms of materials. We humans are cheap. We are very cheap to make. In fact, we are so cheap to make that we were made probably in one night by our parents without wasting a lot of money. Uh, in any event, so I want to make um, clear that we are very cheap chemically, biologically. And now that we are understanding uh, biotechnology and nanotechnology, we will be able to fix anything in us very cheaply or even free. And this will be free again also because there will be a revolution if it is not free. Uh, imagine if birth back will be only for the rich people or only for the old people. There would be, be a vaccine for COVID everywhere for everybody who wants it. The same with rejuvenation technology. But let me tell you one more thing. Now, the health system, which is not a health system, is a sick system. We don't have health care. We have sick care today. And it is very expensive. And most of the money that we uh, expend on health is in the last five years of life, 80% of the money. And then still people die. At least you could say, okay, if we put 80% of the money, but people didn't die, but no, they still die after 80% of the money wasted. So what is going to happen now? We will put all that money at the beginning so that there is no aging. There will be no aging because we will invest the money in the beginning so that people don't age. Therefore, actually, we will save money. People don't understand this yet. We will save money by not aging. Instead of expending a lot of more money, no, we will save money. That is why it will be free. It will be free like the COVID-19 vaccine. And again, because we are cheap machines. We are not made of diamond and uranium and, and platinum. No, no, we are made of dirty water. This is what we are. We are cheap and we will be a able to live indefinitely young in a cheap way and i repeat free so if we buy that argument jose and I, it makes logically sense in uh, for me as well and also just how we see like the cost of going so much down with technology and so on that it won't cost that much and it, 
I really like the point of going from sick care to healthcare, right? That it's so much cheaper to fix a problem before it becomes big. We all know that. And unfortunately, as you're talking about, was it 80% of the costs today are being spent in the last couple of years, right? Where if we had done more stuff to prevent it in the start, it would have been much cheaper. So what are, what are some of the things that you see that we can do right now that's going to make sure that we get to the point where we have better technology? And then after that, then we can go into discussion. What are some of the technology breakthroughs you think we're going to see within the next, uh, next couple of years? Well, my friend uh, Ray Kurzweil, he talks about three bridges to immortality, three bridges. That is in his book, uh, Fantastic Voyage, Live Long Enough to Live Forever. Live long enough to live forever. And he gives two dates, and I totally agree with him on those dates. He says that by 2029 or 2030, that is in one decade from now, we will be able to reach longevity escape velocity, also sometimes called as the Methuselarity, the singularity of Methuselah. And that means that if we make it for the next 10 years, we will basically live forever even though it's still aging, because our life expectancy grows and grows now because of the medical advances and improvements in health and so on and so forth, about uh, two to three months per year. And this will continue in the future. And in one decade, uh, this will probably be one year per year. So for every year we survive, we gain another extra year. So this is called longevity escape velocity. But then eventually, after we cross the three bridges that I will explain briefly now, uh, we will make it to 2045, where, when we will have basically immortality, because we will have rejuvenation treatments that I believe will be free and available for anyone who wants them. Okay, so what are the three bridges? The first bridge we are just finishing, which is the 2010s. And those are the things that your mother told you. Eat well, sleep well, uh, don't drink too much, don't smoke, uh, do exercise, maybe some meditation. Those are the bridge one technologies. Now, in the 2020s, we start the second bridge uh, technologies, which are biotechnology, basically. Some of those treatments that are beginning right now are uh, senolytics, for example. Senolytics is to eliminate the zombie cells in the body, the old cells in the body that cause inflammation and accelerate aging. So this is one of the biggest areas that we are going to see in the next uh, couple of years. Uh, in fact, there are, I believe, over 20 companies right now working on a uh, senolytics. And uh, there will be other treatments. There are many um, by biotechnology companies right now working on aging, anti-aging and reverse aging. All of these will be exploding in the next uh, decade. And then we will make it to the third bridge, which is the 2030s. And that will be the start of nanotechnology treatments. Basically getting at the molecular level, at the atomic level of our bodies and being able to repair molecule by molecule, atom by atom, our body. And this is uh, already will become very cheap, as I said, because we will go down to the very nature of our bodies. We will have nanobots that will clean our veins, our arteries, our heart, our brains, nanobots that will be very small, very cheap, when they are massified and democratized and everybody will have access to these technologies in the 2030s. And so finally, we will make it into the 2040s, the final bridge with AI, artificial intelligence that will lead to uh, immortality and the singularity, which is the other big, big, big thing, the singularity, the technological singularity, which is when artificial intelligence reaches human intelligence level. It's got an exciting future we have got ahead of us. Jose, something I'm quite curious about, like, 
because the people that calculate and you've been part of it are, are engineers. How did you get to these numbers? Like why is like 2029, 2030 and 2045? I know like when I, I discussed this after I saw you talk in Finland and someone was like, where are these numbers coming from? Like, how do we calculate that? Uh, yes, um, that's a very good question. And actually, let me tell you a little bit of history. Uh, Ray Kurzweil, who is also from my alma mater, from MIT, from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And I met him several decades ago when I was a student. He's obviously older than me, but he was very famous. And he began making forecasts in the 1980s. Uh, talking about uh, um, all the future developments in technology. And um, he looks at trends and the different technologies, how fast they are moving and everything is accelerating, like the famous Moore's Law, um, based on uh, Gordon Moore, who was the co-founder of Intel. And actually he discovered in 1965 that um, computers or the chips were uh, doubling in their um, processing capabilities every couple of years and the price was decreasing. This began in 1965, but then uh, Ray Kurzweil has discovered that this is happening in all technologies that can be digitized. And in fact, now biology can be digitized. After we sequence the human genome, uh, we we are basically zeros and ones, our bodies, or actually the four um, uh, nucleotides that make biology, A, G, T, C, as they are called. Uh, in any event, um, you can make extrapolations and uh, try to be right. And uh, it is hard. Many people do these kind of extrapolations. But Ray Kurzweil, again, since the 1980s, he has been actually over 80% right in his forecast. And this is incredible. This is like magic that someone has been able to make all these forecasts for four decades and been so right. However, he has been 20% wrong, sometimes uh, too early, sometimes too late. So uh, let's see uh, what happens in the future. I, I do think that he's right because I look at his trends and his forecasts. In fact, all of this will be renewed in his new book, The Singularities Near Air. So it is actually closer, The Singularities Near Air. And this uh, book will come out in October of this year, 2021. And actually he will be presenting the book in a conference I am organizing as well. But um, anyway, he's making these trends. And then uh, it just happens that by 2029, 2030, uh, we will also be able to pass the, the Alan Turing test. The Alan Turing test um, was an idea created by a British scientist, Alan Turing, who said that there will soon be a machine, a computer, an artificial intelligence, a robot that will speak like us. And we would not be able to know if we are talking to a, to a robot or to a human. And then um, this trend continues, continues, continues also now in biology, as I said, because biology has been digitized now. And we can see how close we are getting to, to the human genome, which is three gigabytes. Our human genome is not that big. We are only three gigabytes of data. That is what we are three gigabytes of data. So anyway, using these numbers and extrapolations like Moore's law, we get to some specific dates. But if you want to get more information, Ray Kurzweil is the one who makes them. I only share them and uh, agree with him. And uh, this is all over the internet. And he ratifies that in his latest book, The Singularity is Nearer in October 2021 in Spain, the USA, all over the world. I look very much forward to reading that book. And he's going to be at your conference in Madrid in October. Tell me a little bit more about that, Jose. Yes. Um, actually, um, I helped to organize several companies. One um, which is called RAD Fest. RAD is R-A-A-D. And that means revolution against aging and death. 
revolution against aging and death. We have done this conference uh, for several years. The first three years, it was in San Diego, California, and Ray Kurzweil spoke twice there. Then we had a, a, another one later in Las Vegas, and then we had Ray Kurzweil as an avatar, as a robot. And then the last conference last year was virtual. Um, this year also the conference RADFest will be virtual, but I am organizing another one, which is called Transvision. Transvision is the global conference of transhumanists. Transhumanists are basically immortalists who believe in science and technology to transcend the human condition. And we will have many top speakers. One is uh, um, Ray Kurzweil talking about his latest book, The Singularity is Nearer, but also um, uh, Aubrey de Grey, who is very famous as the guru of uh, longevity, rejuvenation. He is the guy who looks like Rasputin with his long, long beard, uh, even though he's from um, the UK and now he lives in Silicon Valley. Anyway, so Aubrey de Grey will be here, Liz Parrish, that we call patient zero uh, in terms of telomerase treatments. She has been the first person who injected herself with telomerase uh, to make her telomeres grow. And uh, some other incredible people, the focus will be longevity, rejuvenation and immortality. Once again, the conference in Madrid, Spain is called Transvision. So you can just Google Transvision Madrid and the website is transvisionmadrid.com. I'll make sure to get in the show notes and I hope that I have the chance to uh, participate. So Jose, so hearing these different things uh, and these different ways, we talked about right now, it's about what your mom told you, living like movement, food, um, sleep, all of the different things. When we then hit the next couple of ways, do we then no longer need to eat proper, sleep proper, move or what's kind of the take on that if someone is, is is listening to this or is that still necessary to continue to live to actually be able to keep the cells um yeah in the main three bridges to immortality bridges as ray kurzweil calls them obviously one goes on top of the other on top of the other so uh eventually um we will be able to repair in the in the 2040s basically any problems in our bodies. Uh, but it is important, obviously, to start with the basics because we are what we eat. And there is no doubt about that because we are a machine that has some input and some output. So if we eat garbage and there are people who really eat garbage, that's not good for the body. So um, we have to still try to be healthy with the bridge one technologies of our mother or our grandmother. But again, in the future, we might be able to correct all of that. If you like to eat garbage, we will be able to correct your eating garbage. Also, we might be able to change our brains or our bodies so that we don't need to sleep mm, uh, so much or even sleep at all. Uh, we don't know what technology of the future will be able to do. But for that, we have to make it until 2045. So, well, actually even less um, to 2030, because then we will reach longevity escape velocity. That means that we will live long enough to live forever, it's still aging, but that is okay because rejuvenation will come later. And again, I, want, I am very optimistic uh, because I know the science, I believe in the science. And for example, we know that rejuvenation is possible. Uh, and the Nobel Prize in Medicine, I want to emphasize this, in 2012 was for cell rejuvenation, cell reprogramming. And it was only a few genes that controlled that aging process. Also cancer, once again, cancer discovered how not to age. And there are other cells that do not age. For example, germ cells. And we all humans, we have germ cells, they do not age. The somatic cells age in our bodies, but not the germ cells. Also, there are other organisms that do not age, like some hydras. 
some jellyfish and um, other organisms that we are continuously discovering, small organisms, but they do not age. And also bacteria, this is another thing I like to say a lot, bacteria who were the first life forms in our planet, they also do not age. Bacteria that divide symmetrically, they do not age. And actually their chromosomes are circular. Therefore, they don't have telomeres. There is no beginning and no end to the chromosome of uh, many bacteria. So these bacteria do not age. And they were the life forms that appeared on the planet over three and a half billion years ago. So life appeared to live. The purpose of life is life, more life, better life, longer life, healthier life. And uh, we need to understand this. So when people say a stupid things that death gives meaning to life, I say, well, maybe for you. And if it gives you so much meaning, why don't you die sooner? Why do you want to wait? You know, uh, so all these uh, stupid answers that people say that death is good, that uh, they don't want to live uh, forever. So let them die. That is okay. This is democratic. Uh, you know, some people will want to die. In fact, it is a sad reality. Even today, mm. we have suicides. People commit suicide. So it is a tragedy, I think, because they don't realize how beautiful life is and how much better actually life will be in the future if you are healthy, if you are young, and if you live in a prosperous world as we are all going to be in the next two decades. Yeah. There's one thing I cannot stop think of thinking about like since I heard about it the first time. So I love to, to do semi-dangerous board like kite surfing, surfing is not so bad, skydiving and so on. And if I can suddenly live till I'm 400, 500, 1,000 or continuous, I would get a lot more afraid of doing activities that I would potentially die from. So that it's going to be interesting how that changes, like what activity. Like, I don't think it would be kite surfing. Right now, I'm like, if I lose 50 years or like the, the, the risk is so low compared to the benefit, right? But if even the risk is so low, but like the, the consequence is so hard, how do you think that's going to change our, our way of looking at risk and living? Well, I think we are going to be uh, immortal in two ways. Our hard work, our bodies, our biology will be basically immortal, but also our software, our brain. And when I say that our hardware will be immortal, well, it might actually be um, destroyed. And as you said, if we have an accident or if a truck runs over us, then we might die biologically. But if we have a backup, if we have a software backup, if we have a brain backup, which will be possible again in 2045, more or less, five years before or after, then um, um, you, you might not have to worry about that because even if you die, we, we might be able to recover you. Or so you're to telling me you. I, can, I can start base jumping as well, not just skydiving, but do things that are even more risky because I just get the backup. Well, and people actually will want to go to the moon and to Mars. And that is very, very risky, in fact. But um, if one of you gets destroyed and we can create a new you that will be basically almost you, uh, it might be okay. Uh, anyway, uh, those things are fascinating to think about. But first, we need to reach at least longevity escape velocity. So I tell all my friends to eat well, sleep well, do some exercise, some meditation. So we make it alive for the next 10 years. And then we will go from biotech treatments, like uh, we were mentioning that are beginning just now, into the nanotech treatments, nanotechnology. And that will help us to rejuvenate uh, later on. Fantastic. I find it so fascinating. I heard the first time about Singularity University and these kind of ideas. I think it was six years ago, and it totally blew my mind to hear to hear about it and and how things were changing so fast. 
And I think it's so fascinating what's going to be happening also for how do we find purpose in life and what matters and what are we going to spend the time on. Also, the whole discussion about whether we're going to be needing to work because we have computers being able to do much of the stuff. So instead, we can go surfing or we can go do yeah, art, dancing and different things. It's a, it's a fascinating future. So, Jose, with all of your research, what should we do now and which technologies should we keep an eye on for the next couple of years? I have seen hyperbaric oxygen chambers, a study coming out the, uh, the other day where the telomeres, I think you, if, you, if I pronounced it right, how they were being uh, actually rejuvenated in, uh, in people that didn't even do lifestyle interventions. And, and yeah, what kind of technologies are you seeing right now as the most promising within the next couple of years? And, and what should we do right now with this first wave? Um, well, once again, I'm very optimistic about the technology we are uh, creating and even copying, copying technology from cancer. Remember, actually, cancer can give us many clues about immortality because cancer has done it already. So there is a lot of research now that we are digitizing biology so we can sequence the genome of the good cells and the cancer cells. That is why I can tell you, I am convinced that in one decade, we will cure basically all cancers because we will sequence the genome of the cancer cells and compare them to the good cells in the body and just target them uh, to kill those cancer cells. So is that, that with are... CRISPR or what technology can we do that? Can, or is it a new technology coming out that we haven't heard about? Actually, yeah. Well, there are many gene editing technologies. CRISPR is one of them, uh, but there are many more and there will be better ones. Actually, there is uh, a lot of discussion about the next CRISPR technology wave. This is improving. But let me give you an example because we are in COVID times. And uh, COVID uh, is really fantastic. It gave us an opportunity to launch a technology which is new for the vaccines, the vaccine of two of the biggest companies now, Pfizer with BioNTech in Germany and Moderna in Boston. These two companies are using a new technology called uh, messenger RNA. And this messenger RNA technology is really new uh, commercially. Even though it was discovered maybe four decades ago, it, it is only now that we are using. And everything is moving so fast. Just to give you some examples, when AIDS appeared in the 1980s, uh, it was supposed to be the perfect disease because it would kill you. It would destroy um, uh, your immune system and you would die. So it was called the perfect disease when it appeared. And we didn't even know what created it. Uh, it took uh, over two years to be able to discover the virus and then sequence it. So we were talking about years and the first treatments came uh, two decades later and they cost millions of dollars, millions of dollars. Now actually uh, AIDS uh, or HIV drugs are relatively cheap and they are uh, available for free, by the way, for free in most uh, social security systems. So something that cost millions of dollars and it took years to sequence the HIV virus. Now it is um, a chronic disease. It is a control disease that doesn't kill people if you take your medication. But let's continue with viruses. So over two years um, to sequence HIV, then when the first SARS virus came out also about 20 years ago, it took over two months. So we went from two years to two months. Now to sequence uh, COVID-19, it took only two weeks. Actually, to be exact, it took 11 days. The Chinese scientists who discovered the virus they needed 11 days to sequence the virus. And then they sent the code, the genetic code, via email to Moderna in Boston and BioNTech in Germany. And these companies in days produced the first vaccines. This is like magic, like magic. People were saying it would take 
you know, 10 years, 20 years, no. Uh, 11 days to sequence the virus, two days to create the first vaccine, a few months to do the human clinical trials. And in the future, it will be less because these uh, vaccines with messenger RNA are so fast to make, to create, and so powerful. They are the best vaccines. Of all the vaccines we have now for COVID, they are the best. And they were the fastest. And, and um, we are learning so much. So for the next pandemic, actually, there will be no big global pandemic anymore. To me, this is the last global pandemic, thanks to everything we have learned. New technologies, new sequencing capabilities. In fact, we are sequencing many of the, of the new COVID-19 uh, mutants or, or variants very quickly because we are sequencing now very cheaply. This was impossible 10 years ago. And uh, so we will be creating vaccines, distributing them very quickly to everybody who wants them. So this to me is the last global pandemic in human history. And um, technology keeps on improving. So uh, some of the treatments you were talking about, obviously hyperbaric uh, uh, chambers. But um, I want to go into deeper things like senolytics. Senolytics, I think is really incredible because uh, it eliminates the old cells in the body. And this is very important, especially because inflammation is one of the major causes of aging. So we need to stop inflammation and we need to eliminate old cells in the body. So this is coming very soon. Uh, also, many other gene therapies, obviously, including some CRISPR treatments. Uh, another incredible experiment that was done last uh, year in Harvard University by Australian biologist, David Sinclair, uh, he was able to take a blind mice and give them vision again uh, through cellular reprogramming. The eye is a small organ, basically confined. And so he actually used cellular reprogramming to turn the old eye into a new eye. And this is truly beautiful. So the, bl the blind mice could see again. And this is only the beginning of these treatments we are going to see in the first few years. Again, first with animals and then eventually with humans. Uh, another uh, uh, thing that people can do, which I do myself, uh, for example, is taking metformin. Metformin is incredibly cheap. It's available in most places in the world without any restriction. And uh, if you take one gram or even half a gram per day, it has uh, shown to have very good results in terms of longevity. Basically Met to give you- Metformin is from the diabetes medicine, right? So it's one of the most studied medicine. Absolutely. And, and it has been used in some countries like France for 60 years. So there is so much data. But what was interesting, and, and so that people can understand that, uh, metformin was given to people with diabetes, indeed. And I don't recall the exact, uh, exact numbers, but it is something like that. People who had diabetes and took metformin, they lived five years more than people who had diabetes but took no metformin. But then they compared people taking uh, metformin who were diabetic with people who had no diabetes. And you know what the scientists discovered? That diabetic people with metformin lived two years longer than normal people without diabetes. So the longevity effects are very clear, so clear than the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration in the USA uh, is beginning uh, a longevity test on metformin. And it might become the first drug officially approved in the USA uh, to stop aging or to a slow aging at this time. That is absolutely fascinating. I, I heard about that several times from my friends in the longevity uh, field, NAD is another thing that I heard a lot about, um, but that once you start, you need to keep going at it. Yes, indeed, there are many other things. Uh, NAD is one of them, uh, but NAD is, is not that cheap. 
uh, because metformin is like aspirin. It, it really is nothing. Uh, it is in Europe, it's basically two euros per month. So it's nothing to take metformin. In the USA, you need to have a prescription, but you, you should be able to get prescriptions uh, relatively easily, especially after the FDA uh, approval is granted, hopefully in one or two years. Um, so NAD indeed is, is one thing that are, uh, people are taking and there are so many other new things coming up. Um, what I can tell you is that uh, these are uh, bridges or uh, small waves, as you were mentioning, into the, the next big wave of uh, nanotechnology. Um, uh, also, there are many experiments. If you come to the conference, RAD Fest, Revolution Against Aging and Death, even if it is virtual again this, this October, uh, you will discover many of these treatments, uh, the cheap ones and the more expensive ones. Again, they are expensive now because in a way they are kind of new, kind of experimental. But again, all of these will be like aspirin or like metformin, you know? Uh, to be immortal, it's going to be probably, you know, one one dollar per day. And actually, I think even less. But don't worry, even if it is that, it will be paid by Social Security. OK, so forget about paying for immortality. It will be free if you want it. I, I cannot do some more research on this and definitely show off that conference. Jose, time is running. I could continue talking with you for hours, but I also promise you that uh, I wouldn't take too much of your time. Where can people find out more about you? Um, well, in Wikipedia. Actually, I made it to Wikipedia, so I'm very happy. Uh, my book also will be soon in six languages. Uh, the Death of Death came out first in my mother tongue in Spanish, uh, then in uh, Portuguese. Then in French, uh, now it's coming in Russian, in Chinese, and in Turkish. It is not yet in English, actually, uh, because I'm looking for a very good publisher. I haven't gotten that good publisher I want, so I'm still looking for it. But there is no rush. You know, I'm quite busy with the Chinese market. Yes. That's the biggest market in the world. And my book is being published by the government printing house in China. So, uh, and, and let me tell you, I'm very excited because the Chinese are worried because the population will, be, will begin declining in China. Uh, the forecast of China is horrific. They will lose 700 million people by the end of the century, 700 million people because of the one child policy. So it is a disaster and they don't want obviously China to decline by half. Uh, so they, they are putting a lot of money on longevity. And that is why the government of China is publishing my book in China. So I am really, really excited. Anyway, so just Google the death of death, my name in Wikipedia, and all of you are welcome to Transvision Madrid 2021. It will be the most beautiful place in Madrid in the famous Ateneo. Ateneo comes from Athens, uh, the capital of Greece, right? It's, it's, it's like the cultural center of Spain. And it is celebrating 200 years right now. So we are going to talk about the next 200 years celebrating the last 200 years. So it really is a fantastic opportunity. We will talk about old um, and new and changing technologies with a focus on longevity, anti-aging, rejuvenation, and immortality. Boom. I look forward to that, Jose. Jose, who do you follow? So Ray, virtual. Dave Sinclair, who else should uh, should we look for and follow in regards to this longevity? Um, well, obviously, uh, Ray Kurzweil and Aubrey de Grey are pioneers, absolutely pioneers. And now there are newer people coming up, uh, like David Sinclair. I mean, he's incredible because he's a professor at Harvard University uh, and he's doing research, rejuvenating mice. Uh, there are other people also at the at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine near Barcelona. 
near Barcelai. Uh, he's actually um, leading the metformin uh, trials with the Food and Drug Administration. And also he will be collaborating with a new foundation from the Middle East that will be funding $1 billion per year for rejuvenation research. One billion dollars per year for rejuvenation research. This is big, but actually it will be bigger next year because, you know, uh, people don't want to die. And before we couldn't do anything about death, now we can. So uh, it is not useful to die if you have even a thousand dollars and even less if you have a billion dollars. So some people realized in the Middle East where they have billions and billions of dollars from the oil industry, that they might as well use it if, if they can stop aging. So this is only the beginning of the biggest industry in human history. Mm. And let me give you an example quickly. You know, in the year 2000, the biggest companies in the world were industrial companies, basically energy companies, ExxonMobil, Shell, British Petroleum, and Chevron Texaco. Those were the largest companies in the world. Uh, 20 years later, they were uh, information technology companies, uh, Apple, Amazon, uh, Google, Facebook, Microsoft. Well, in 20 years, the largest companies, the largest industries will be devoted to longevity, to immortality, because that is the future. All of us are aging and we need to stop aging. And we know we are close. We are very close. So we have to accelerate this process. So anyway, talking about other people, near Barcelai, he's a fantastic person. Also, Mike West, Michael West, he has uh, an incredible company called HX. They are also working on how to reverse aging. And uh, Andrew Steele, who is an uh, Oxford-educated uh, biologist and information technology person, he published a fantastic book uh, recently called Ageless. Ageless. Um, Andrew Steele from the United Kingdom. So there are many scientists. Uh, again, uh, also, uh, 10 years ago, you could count in one hand the number of scientists working on this. Now we can actually name hundreds of people, hundreds. Uh, hopefully in one decade, we are going to be talking about thousands and thousands of people working on longevity because this is the ultimate problem of humanity. We are all dying. We are all aging. In fact, COVID was the perfect way to show that if you are old, you probably have more chances of dying. And not just mm. with COVID, with anything, with heart attack, with cancer, with Parkinson's, with Alzheimer's, they appear when you age. If you don't age, if you are biologically 20, there is almost no probability of getting COVID or of getting heart attacks or getting Alzheimer's, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the goal is to be like 20 years old for as long as you want. If you want to get old, you are free to get old and die. No problem. But I think most intelligent people will decide to stay young because we will have the technology to live indefinitely young for as long as we want. So anyway, it, it really is exciting. Uh, it we, is. Are between, we are between the last human mortal generation and the first immortal generation. So where do you want to be? I'm going to be more careful with my kite surfing and skydiving to make sure we, uh, we we cross the point. Jose, I always end up by asking my guests, like, what what advice would you give to listeners? Like, uh, one, two, three final advice for listeners about how to live a happy, healthy, and meaningful life or or in your area, like, how to make it to the 2045? Well, uh, live long to live forever. Make it for the next 10 years. Also think not only about... Um, life extension but life expansion expansion we need to expand our capabilities uh, like i i would like to speak danish i think yeah. it's 
your mother tongue, or Russian, or Chinese, because my book is coming out in Chinese, a major bestseller in China with the government. I would love to speak Chinese, or even um, uh, Vulcan, like uh, 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 Mr. Spock, or yeah. Klingon from uh, Star Trek. So uh, life extension, life expansion. Life is so beautiful, and it is only going to get more beautiful. So get ready for the future because the future is beautiful. I totally agree. Jose, thank you so much for coming on the podcast, sharing this, giving the inspiration for people to see like, we're not in that much of a rush. We need to enjoy life and make sure that uh, we get there at, uh, at a good healthy state so we can continue enjoying this beautiful life. So live long and prosper, my friend. Thank you.